Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess of Body Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be doing a pick a card reading setup for this week's reading. And the reason why is because I feel like this should really be timeless. And I want to be able to give you guys um, a chance to pick out the specific message that Spirit, your guides, the divine wants you to hear and to receive at this time that you were gravitating towards this video. I'm seeing um, a really high need for videos that don't have an expiration date. So I'm responding to that by being able to provide that for you today. I have three piles that are here for you to pick and choose from. Allow yourself to be completely open to this process. Don't put pressure on yourself. It's okay for you to be drawn to the number, the face that's on the card. I have not seen these cards. It's gonna be a surprise for me as well, but it's good because it allows intuition to just kind of flow without any confinement, without any restraint. Timestamps are down below in the comments as well, as well as the description box. And on that note, let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so for those of you that chose Ma'at, the messenger of truth, at least that's what she represents in this card, you have to be fair, which is interesting because she's also connected to the scales and justice. And if you've never seen this card before, which it's from Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron Reed, and all of the cards that I'm using are going to be linked down in the description box too if you're interested. But um, there is a scale that she's holding on to. She's holding on, on one scale, there's a fortune cookie, and the other one, there's an egg. So I find that really, really interesting. The next one is never ending story. The first word, without me even diving into this even further, I just heard the word sacrifice. I'm not sure why, but we'll see if it shows up at all. Um, retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. Express your love and children. Something about these cards here, I'm hearing, hey, can we talk? Like, it's like a, a quiet moment. Let's say you're in an auditorium. Let's say you're in a convention center. I don't know why those are the things that are coming through. Or maybe it's something, there's an emphasis on being in the public, being in public's eye or being around a lot of people. So you really want to pull away from everyone and get a quiet moment, a like a moment to talk without people listening, without interruptions. And there's a really strong connection, a really strong, you know, like, can I, I need to talk to you. There's something I need to ask you. There's something I need to tell you there. Oh, see, there's a truth. Huh. Now I dropped her. Okay. But even with this card, the never ending story, and to be fair, there's a really, there's a, a link here, and I'll, uh, I'm not sure what it is, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, so you have what it takes. If they loved you once, they still do, which is interesting because the never ending story. Everyone is doing their best. That's the truth. To be fair and truth. Okay, you glow, we beam. This is what I feel is actually unfair. Again, this is someone I feel it's in public eye or there's a lot of people that look towards you or look towards them. It feels as though this conversation, if there is a conversation, it feels like it could be high risk. It feels like if this was to get out, it would be embarrassing. Not that you have anything to hide, but it's a very vulnerable moment. So you wanna pull someone aside or they wanna pull you aside and have a heart to heart. I feel now saying, okay, let me just get these cards out. There's a lot that's coming through. See the card forgiveness. Then we have work. This to me, as I'm looking at this card, it feels like I don't want it to feel like work. I don't want, you know, this, it felt like work or I don't want it to feel like work and I didn't. But then at the same time, it's like everyone's doing their best. Was it work? There's a lot coming through here. Okay, abundance. Maybe this is in the work environment because I also got the, this feeling of a convention center, and loneliness. Then we have balanced friendship. Someone is really trying to work things out, to be fair. Open your third eye. This is really, this is where I feel a word sacrifice is coming through. Open your third eye. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, listening, I feel like someone needs to tell you something. Or you're, nature, this is grounding. Ten of cups. 
Interesting. The Chariot. The Hermit card. Wow, very interesting. And then we have the Star card. We have Ten of Wands reversed and the Five of Pentacles. So it's very interesting because what I'm getting is what's standing out to me is the scales and things being balanced out. And pretty much what I mean by things being balanced out is you take what this story has looked like, what this experience has looked like, and when you put it on the scale and when you see the effort versus the reward or you see what you put in versus what you received, it's actually not fair. It's not, there's definitely an off, an imbalance here. Even with Five of Pentacles, this is about lack um, and not receiving everything that it is that you would want. It's, it's very, um, you're not fulfilled emotionally, abundantly, spiritually, mentally. There's a, there's, you're not fulfilled. There's empty spaces, there's gaps. And for you or for this energy, it feels endless. It feels like this is not, this literally is not fair. When this person or when this thing pulls you aside, I really feel this really strong need to say that maybe it's you that has to pull yourself aside because even the hermit card showing up, this is about being separate and away from. It's not always about loneliness. It's about taking that time to dive into you know, the meat, the root of why this is what it is. This is finding the truth of who you are or your circumstances. It's getting, it's gaining better understanding and clarity into things that you might not understand or things that might not be clear to you in this moment or someone else. And when I'm seeing the chariot card here, I feel as though someone or something maybe you have taken time to pull away from the world in order to really kind of weigh out everything and find the truth of it and maybe to have a conversation. If this is connected to work, this is something that says, listen, I've been putting in a lot. I've been putting in a lot of work. I've been putting in a lot of effort into my business, into the career, into this corporation, into this organization. And I feel like what it is that I've gotten back has not really provided for me. But then there's this like, catch 22 where it's you might be doing something that is that you really truly love but still it feels like it's not balanced it feels like it's not coming back to you i feel as though you still kind of concentrated your energy that's the word that just came through it's a high concentration of energy or love or effort that was still poured into this thing whatever this is ceaselessly endlessly it just kept going and i feel as though the universe at this point in time says if you were to pull back and there is a very heightened sense of compassion and mercy that the universe the divine wants you to receive at this point or maybe you have to give it to someone else but if you were to pull back and center yourself and ground yourself and ask yourself when i put everything out onto paper does it even out and it won't <laughs> there's this um there's a strong sense of it, it's not even it's really not even it's not fair how things kind of played out it's not fair how much you have given it's not fair how much you've taken or how much someone else has taken knowing that there's this sense of give compassion and mercy to it at the same time do not be a victim of it so i feel as though especially with this listening card and express your love and retreat, it's time to disconnect from the world, even with the hermit card. So maybe it, maybe this is someone, there's, there's a really strong chance of work um, and abundance. I think I said that at the very beginning, well, duh, because these two cards are here. But I think I said that in the very beginning where it's like it shouldn't feel like work, like it shouldn't be this hard, but it has been. And this, again, this is something that, is that you love and you want to see it gain momentum. You want to see it build movement, but the amount of effort that it's taking to get the steam engine going and to continue on, it's at this point, it feels like it's not fair. It feels like it's very off balance. And the universe says, listen, you know what? It, it can't be all give, give, give. And it cannot be you give, give, giving with resentment, with guilt, with frustration, because that is no good. That energy is felt. It is felt. There is a resounding 
sense of, um, I don't say punishment because it's not the universe that's punishing you, but the energy, it, it ends up being punishing on the body, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. All of those things are all tied in. There is no doubt in my mind and the universe that says that you have what it takes. Of course you do. But just because you have what it takes doesn't mean that you should succumb to it or that you should chain yourself um, to being the, the thing that keeps pushing, pushing, pushing. You know what I mean? It's like if you have, it's interesting with the chariot card because I'm getting, you know, something that keeps bucking. You know what I mean? Um, but with the chariot card, you have one horse, one animal, one, and that horse animal represents a certain thing. Um, so it's one polarity and then you have something to totally opposite. And behind the chariot is the person who is using their will and their intention in order to make movement, in order to allow things to progress and move forward. But if you're working with, especially with this children energy here, there's this, if you're working with a horse or a, a thing, and I'm saying horse because that's in this card, it's working with horses. But if you're working with energy that is like pushing out and pushing back, it is best sometimes to see it for what it is, see it, the truth of the matter, and put the reins down, at least put it, you know, put it over there. The word is compartmentalize. I don't know why that just came through, but um, putting, it, putting it over there, separating it, where, putting it in the box that it belongs so that when the time comes, you can come back and train it. But for right now, that is not the horse that's going to take you into your, you know, your goals, your future. If there's a question of really seeing, does it really truly have what it takes? Even when something or someone is doing the best that they can, sometimes you have to really take a step back and hermit card it, you know what I mean? Kind of disconnect for a minute and ask yourself the deep hard question that says, if this person is doing the best that they can with what they have, is it enough? Will it suffice? Am I happy with it? Can I live with it? And if I continue to give to it, will this be something that will be good for me? Will the outcome be healthy and positive and a part of my destiny, like a part of, you know, in alignment with who I am and my core values and my intention? Or will I end up finding myself giving out of, and resenting it and being bitter? And because that's not good for anything and anyone. And that is actually being fair. That is actually taking the power back in your hands. Even with this card of loneliness, I don't know if you guys can see this because the lighting in here is very bright, which I personally love. But even with the card of loneliness and the hermit card and the retreat and 10 of cups and the star card here, this is about totally taking a quiet time for yourself. Maybe you do it on your lunch break. Maybe you do it for a week. Maybe you do it you know, just taking in your meditation where you really connect with not just your heart, but your root chakra, your sacral chakra, and really connect with those areas and ask yourself, how is it? Like, how is it? How is it? That's a just point blank period. How is it? Is it good? And if it's not, you really have to kind of reel it in, pull it in, and, and step back into a space where you have to call the shots. Maybe there is a conversation that needs to be had because remember that was one of the first things that I said, which is, you know, can we talk for a minute? And that's when you pull someone aside and be like, listen, I really like working here, or I really like being here, or I really value our friendship, or I really want to invest in you, but I just am feeling like it's, it's really been off balance. I feel like I've been doing a lot. And I feel like I'm always there for you. Or I feel like, you know, you make me happy, but like at the same time, at what cost? Because you, you let me down. It's not fair. And I get that you have this, 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 this going on. But I'm going to give you your space to do what you got to do because I'm going to take my space to do what I got to do. And hopefully one day we'll cross paths. Or hopefully one day you can give me the promotion that it is that I need. Or hopefully one day you can respect that this is my process and I'm not backing down. <laughs> There's like so many different conversations that is that you can have. 
um, and I feel like they need to hear it. The other thing, this really, this card really bothers me that says, you glow, we beam. And basically what I'm seeing from this is that the more, the reason why it bothers me, and I'll tell you in a second, but when I hear you glow, we beam, there's this focus on when you take care of yourself and you balance the friendship out or the connection out, because that's another card here, balance friendships. When you balance this out, what this give and take you have so much more to give to other people, but at the same time, it cannot be you that's constantly giving all the time. It cannot be you carrying the weight and the burden of all of this. And basically, you'll take that to your grave. That's the thing about Ma'at, is that when you die in Egyptian spirituality, when you die, she's there to kind of weigh out the pros and the cons and be like, listen, this is what it was like for you. Yeah, you did a lot, but you, you know, it, it, was, it was not, you weren't giving out of love, you were giving out of resentment and obligation. And that's something that the spirit world doesn't. You know, spirit world reads energy. So it doesn't matter what your intentions are or how much you would hope to feel different by giving. If you're giving from a space of resentment, the spirit world picks up on that very, very quickly. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing, even with the Ten of Wands, it's like take off that burden. Stop doing it all by yourself because you will crush, crush, crush under the weight of that. Um, the other thing that I'm seeing is emotional, emotional, I don't say baggage, but the weight, the burden of it all. Sometimes, very often times, for many people, you don't realize the weight of what you've been holding on to and carrying because you've gotten so used to carrying it. I know a lot of people in my life that have not accepted that truth yet. And I feel like them holding on to it the reason why they hold on to it is because they're afraid of the work that it would take in order to go into this hermetic mode and really ask yourself, why am I like this? Why am I doing this? Why am I in this relationship? Why am I in this job? Why do I act this way? Why do I spend my money in this way? And if you really ask yourself those questions and tried the different keys into each of those locks, it's a painful process. But it helped, it, it, maybe it could take, and there's no timetable to it. It can take one year, it could take two years, it could take three years. But if you don't do that energy work, if you don't try and fit those keys in in order to unlock the truth of why you are the way that you are, then you end up in this vicious cycle. And this Ten of Cups is here looming. It really is looming over you. Those that pick this card, it's, it's looming over you. And it's showing you that it's you're doing your best, but something about this, it's like the universe says that, maybe that's the word sacrifice. It's like you're sacrificing, because that's the first thing that came through. It's like you're sacrifice. You're, you have to exchange, give your ego in exchange for honesty. You know what I mean? And it, your ego has to be kind of broken down or you have to, you know, kind of open up to forgive, open up to be compassionate, not only with others, but also with yourself and be open to the healing. And I feel like so much of what you have done so far has been, sac it's been a sacrifice, one thing after another. And it's it's been like punishment. You've been almost beating yourself, hitting yourself, hurting yourself with, or if maybe it's not you, maybe it feels like the universe has been punishing you. And um, I feel like it's really time to kind of pull back and, and, I don't want to say, you know, not be at a, a spot of like sacrifice. I'm all, I, what I just got just now is like time. Sometimes we want to like race forward with time or maybe there's a lot of time that passed and we feel like, well, I only have one life to live. I'll never be able to get that time back. So I'm just going to book this trip. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do all these things. And there is this space right now of kind of retreating and really evening out the playing field a little bit, evening out energy, evening out the give and the take, even with the universe. This is a conversation that you might actually have to have with the divine. And I'm pulling up the Ten of Cups right now in Buddha because I see this as, or Buddha energy, as this like enlightened, jovial Jupiter um, energy, um, higher higher spirit, like the, the divine manifesting in this way. And I don't think that when you approach the the, the divine, the universe, through your meditation or through your prayer, or through your quiet time and say, you know what, I've, I've really undergone a lot lately and I just feel as though it's time for the energy to level out. I'm really asking you to balance things out so that it's not all about me 
giving, 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 doing, 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 or receiving, receiving, punishment, punishment, backlash, backlash, trouble, 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 disappointment, disappointment, failure, failure, failure. I need to have this conversation with you and I need you to pull me up out of the muck right now because it, it's not, it's not fair. I need you to know that I'm doing my best. Um, I'm doing my best. I've been holding on to faith. I've been holding out and trying to heal myself and trying to be better, but it's still, I need to hear from you. I need to see evidence that this thing that it is that I need or this breakthrough or this movement, momentum, things coming together, I need to see it happening. I need to feel that. I need to experience that. It's been too long. And it's okay for you to have that conversation. Even as I'm looking at this, I feel like if you were to cross paths with Buddha and Buddha was walking across the street and you knew that it was God or the divine or the, the higher power, you wouldn't be intimidated to have that conversation. So I feel like you having this conversation with the divine or with whoever is you would be surprised. You would be surprised how open they are to hearing what it is that you have to say and kind of switching things up if you, you know, if you're open to expressing it even here. So this could really be you talking about talking to someone about your heart, pulling them aside, having that conversation with spirit or whatever, allowing them to listen to you and hear you, the divine, this other person, allow you to hearing and listening to them, and then things kind of balancing out, right? Even with the card loneliness and forgiveness, there's a sense here, you know, loneliness is good, even though it doesn't seem like it's good because no one really ever truly wants to be like alone or isolated, I don't think, but Sometimes it gives you a chance to really kind of cater to your own needs instead of having to sacrifice or compromise for others. But, you know, at the same time, it can feel like a punishment. It can really feel like a punishment. Like you could really be ready to um, connect with others right now. And it just feels like it feels relentless. That's the word that's coming through, relentless. I don't know why the word sacrifice is coming through. I mean, I said what I said so far with it, but that's, if I'm slowing down right now, it's because I'm giving spirit a chance to speak or give another word. Um, but I feel like that's pretty much it. I feel like, um, but when it comes to forgiveness though, I, I do feel that there's a conversation that can be had or will be had the time that you're watching this. Open your third eye. It's safe for you to open your center of clairvoyance. By doing so, you'll see the truth. Do you see that? It's really connecting with your vibes, your energy. And I also am getting a sense that you've been picking up on signs around you that are kind of, I don't, the word that just came through is cautioning you. But it's not that it's a caution because you're about to get in trouble. It's, it's just letting, it's preparing you for that there's more around the surface. So that being said, take this time, reconnect with the divine again, or reconnect with someone, or be open to reconnecting with someone or something. And then forgive the journey, because it has been a journey. You have this card here that says it's a never ending story. It feels like it's endless, it's endless, it's endless. Like here we go again. And I'm getting that sense of sacrifice as well too, that it's almost like you were like the sacrificial lamb. You know what I mean? Like everybody else was doing great, moving onward, you know, hitting these highs and you just been hitting those lows. And I feel like it's been really isolating you. You've been really feeling alone in this journey, whatever this thing is. But I feel like there's a space of, okay, I'm going to part, I'm gonna accept it for what it is, but I'm also gonna have this conversation and this conversation is truly gonna change things. Now, who that conversation is with depends on the person because these readings are general. Some of you guys are gonna have this conversation with the divine, others are gonna be with another person. But that's what it is that I'm seeing. I wish you all the best, nothing but the best for you. And um, I hope that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. And I will see you in my next one. Now let me go ahead and move into those who chose the card healing. Okay, so for those of you guys that chose Gulla healing, there's a few things that stood out to me with this just by looking at this. She has a snake on her hand, which is all about transformation, but also awakening, a deep awakening. And she also has a mortar and pestle which is something that I work a lot with in the apothecary, making the oils and setting intention for myself, for my clients. So I just find that so interesting. 
All right, so first card we have here is Fork in the Road. We have Peace. Something about this feels like a new beginning. It feels like heart-centered healing. Oh, that makes sense because this is a card of healing. I'm, I just heard the word clarity, but even that, okay, chaos and conflict. Romantic feelings, so this is definitely from the heart. There's some feelings that are showing up. Calling in your soulmate. Love is never in vain. Honor thyself. Dwell on what you love. You're being watched by loving eyes. Interesting. Challenges, self-acceptance, health, body, and companionship. I'm getting a lot of physical energy coming here, which shows me that it's in the now, it's like present. Um, new idea, and also take time for yourself. Interesting. Then we have spiritual growth, support. Ooh, two of cups, which really connects with calling in your soulmate. Strength card, to me, that's definitely about this, that soulmate connection, but it's more than just the soulmate, it's soul's purpose. Then we have Eight of Pentacles, Knight of Swords, and Ace of Pentacles. Ace of Pentacles was reversed. So, first things first, I'm getting a sense that you are not alone. I'm seeing these double sides of things. Separation, I don't know why, it just feels like there's you, there's me and there's the space between us and I've been sensing that and feeling that a lot lately in my readings I did a reading for a friend recently uh, twice and I felt the same thing coming through it was this word that says there's you there's me and the space between us but that space creates a lot of discord it creates a lot of um, it's like if two things pull apart if you had an ocean this is what I'm just now seeing. If two things separate and pull apart, the separation of those waters creates like an energy vortex that can create like a spinning spinning um, cycle. Like things just feel like they're, we're losing control. Even as I'm looking at that, I'm seeing chaos, or even as I'm saying that, I see chaos and conflict. So in all of that, I'm getting this sense of this space that you're at right now, there's this recognition of your journey, how much you have honored, even with someone nearby, or like honoring your responsibilities, or taking care of your responsibilities, taking care of people around you, you, you have really allowed the space for spiritual growth, for spiritual transformation. That was one of the first things that I saw was the snake. It's like you've been shedding these skins. You've been releasing a lot of emotional baggage, spiritual baggage, generational curses. It's been relentless. It's been endless. Or, and this could, this is not just spiritual. This energy has a way of finding all the ways that it can to express itself and to fit into life, into your life, because that's how energy works. It's not confined or contained to any one thing. It will say, this is how I'm gonna express myself because there's a gap, a gap here and I'm gonna show up. So that's what it is, is that you've been really undergoing this process of, I release it, I release it. You'll get triggered by something or something will happen and it could be something so significant, it could be something so small, but you feel it on a deeper level. There is a rawness that is coming from this group, a really strong rawness. I feel like it, you can feel things in the environment, the world going on in your external environment. You can feel it, you will feel it on a physical level. Let's say you walk into a building and someone's heart is suffering, like they're, they're, they're hurt by something. They just had a breakup, they found out someone is sick, they found out something about themselves, whatever it is, you can really pick up and sense that there's something going on and the energy of what their heart or the energy that they their vibe brings can change everything. 
and I'm feeling like you're really feeling that space. Like you're really picking up on those that 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 space of others. And I think that that's very interesting because this is a part of your spiritual growth is that you are learning how everyone is so connected even though you don't we don't even realize it sometimes or we don't even want to acknowledge it because sometimes all we can see is our differences and our differences can seem so great but you have really you're picking up on feelings my loves like you are truly gifted maybe you're doing a lot of spiritual growth like a lot of spiritual work maybe you've been finding out maybe you recently discovered that you are gifted and you're talented maybe at one point those talents were labeled as dysfunction meaning like maybe you're said that you have you know ADHD or learning disabilities or that you're dysfunctional in some way when the, the reality is is that you're not or they'll be like oh she's so sensitive or he's so sensitive you're it's not I mean there's a Yes, I mean, if you are a highly sensitive person, then that is true, but it's not a bad thing. It's actually a part of your gifts, your special God-given gifts. And it's our world sometimes that's dysfunctional, that doesn't know how to support the magnitude and the brilliance of who and what you are. Does that make sense? So when I'm getting this sense of there's you, there's me, and there's a space between us, that space between us, that gap, it's very important. Number one, it's, you know, time and distance is nothing in the spiritual realm. If you love something, um, it is with you. Even though you may not physically see it, feel it, be able to touch it, it is here present now. Um, at the same time, you know, if there's something that you're connected to, and we're all kind of connected in this grand web of things, but that space, you know, there's this, you're learning how to not absorb other people's energy, other people's chaos, other people's um, conflicts, uh, other people's uh, conf uh, what is it when you people confront when people like when people confront each other. So there could be drama around you, especially with the Nine of Swords. This could be a lot of um, drama. It could be a lot of you know lower vibration, a lot of negativity, or maybe it's not lower vibration. It could be just people really you know, going through challenges, challenges really making themselves known, presenting themselves. So you have to, right now, at this point, you have to decide, what am I going to honor here? And there's, I really, Spirit just called me and told me to pause for a second. And it says, before you make this decision, it, there's a recognition that needs to happen that says what you've been feeling and what you've been picking up on in your environment, just kind of like, you can feel yourself almost pulling away or not being disgusted, but just kind of, or maybe it's not that it's been you so much. You, you, you might have found that the universe has kind of been rerouting you. And like, let's say you're supposed to be taking this trip and your GPS is telling you to go down one road. And then the GPS kind of, you know, there's a bunch of detours and stuff. And you're late for your appointment. You're getting frustrated. Don't get frustrated because literally I'm seeing that there's a lot of support around you that is watching you and navigating you away from, steering you away from the conflict, the tension, the chaos, discord, things that could have been bad that are better because you weren't there. And so whether you're feeling it or picking up on it, just know that there's a healthy level of protection around you. Even the challenges are everything. So let's say you're putting out... Even as I'm saying this, love is never in vain. It feels as though this is not just your love. It's the world. Like it's it's very like divine protection is what I'm getting. There's this recognition that spirit is saying now that says like, listen, it seems like we're trying to stop you and frustrate you, or but in reality, we're really looking out for you. And this your frustration, like our love, like all of this is not in vain. It's not for no reason. So knowing that, even as I'm looking at this, honor yourself. It's when you take a step back, see, take time for yourself, the tulip. Even the tulip, it pulls down every once in a while. You know what I mean? It's one of those um, um, perennials that kind of pop up when the season's right. And then when it pops up, it's new. It's springtime. It's new life. And then you also have the card here of new idea. So I'm really getting this sense of the universe is really trying very hard to support you, to give you peace, and to disconnect you from the chaos and the conflict. And that is a part of your healing. If you have undergone so much spiritual growth, whether intentionally or whether unintentionally, 
you don't think that the universe is going, do you think that the universe would really put you in places that would, you know, beat you up, beat you down, put you right back where it is that you started? Absolutely not. And I am also getting the sense that if you do find yourself in a space where there's a lot of challenges, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, um, there's so much to be, to grow from this, to learn from this. I know that sounds so cliche, but I'm just getting the sense of you just stripping, you stripping. There's this time stripping, meaning like shedding your skins and stuff. Um, there's this emphasis on time, time passing. And it's reminding me like spirit right now is reminding me that, um, you know, the body, our cells, is it, is that the right thing? Our cells there in our skin, everything is constantly shedding itself because it's always making way for new growth. It's always making way for new growth. And if it happens too much, too fast, too soon, your body, your energy will be compromised. So it does it at its own rate, its own pace. I'm getting the sense that you really are undergoing a lot of this shedding process, not only on a physical level, or mentally, emotionally, spiritually, but it's like internally, you're you really are shedding, shedding, shedding. In that space, that that hole that is happening here, the separation between you and something is good because it creates a catalyst for newness. And it creates a catalyst like the energy for new ideas, new birth, new awakening, a reemergence, not in the way that it was but better now. So I'm really getting this sense of um, all of this journey has not been in vain. Even as I'm looking at this, you're being watched by loving eyes. I see this as spirit really calling out to you and saying, listen, if there has been separation, disconnection between you and something else, it is good and it is right. Um, if you feel separated from something, a someone, it is good, it is right. Um, it's definitely there for your for your growth, not only for you, but for them or it. I'm also seeing that when you're shedding this, the new things that would normally nourish you, they might no longer. So you have to kind of recognize that and honor yourself. That's when this fork in the road is showing up because you really have to decide the things that are going to give you the greatest sense of peace and clarity, especially when it comes to companionship who it is that you are sharing your time with, not only romantically, but all types of energy, even family, you guys. You have to make new decisions to take care of your body, your physical health. Any challenges, I want you to not fight them, but to accept them. And I'm also seeing a, a healthy level of, a healthy sense of, I really am going to accept all of who I am. I'm not gonna try to change, you know, who I am, you know, the core of the of who I am, the bones of who I am, because that is who I am. And it's you want to honor yourself, you want to love yourself, and you want to make choices, decisions that support the love that is that you have for yourself. There's a lot of heart healing that is happening here, and even with the spiritual growth card here and support, take time for yourself, dwell on what it is that you love. There is grace, there is divine grace that's given to you. Grace is something that the universe gives or we give to others or we give to ourselves that says under normal circumstances you would have been punished. But these are not normal circumstances. There's a lot happening in a small amount of time. Knowing that we are looking out for you. So you're not gonna be punished for you taking this time. You're not gonna be punished for being rerouted. You're not gonna be punished. None of these things are punishments. It's all divine's grace. It's all God's grace given to you at this point in this life. Now, if you are, I can't ignore the fact that the soulmate card is here, romantic feelings, two of two of cups, healing card is here, take time for yourself, new idea. If you are someone who is concentrating or wanting love, soulmate love, romantic love, I do think and see that that is there for you. But in that space, you and me and the space between us, <laughs> I'm really getting a sense of you connecting with who you are now, what your needs are, even if in your even if you're in a relationship with your soulmate now or you're the person of your like your life partner, you guys are constantly growing. You guys are constantly changing. So you have to really connect with each other once again and ask your partner, you know what, how can I what are, what are your what are your needs now? What do you need from me? How can I be 
a, a good partner to you now that you are who you are because we are always evolving and I want our relationship it, I want our relationship to evolve I want I'm evolving so my needs might change you know what I mean so it's having that heart to heart there's you there's me and the space between us so let's understand that space if you're experiencing a lot of chaos and conflict and discord and dysfunction between you and them it's it's okay you know it's because you guys are changing and it takes vulnerable vulnerability that it's really hard to be strong in that way and to connect and ask listen what is it that you need from me who are you now I'm going to rediscover you you know we you could be together 48 years and still have so much and you will have so much to discover about them because you were always changing we're always evolving um, with these cards, Knight of Swords, this is showing me that conflict, that tension, and you might not even know it, but there might be like a little agitation, a little irritation. And the Eight of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles is like, listen, let's reinvest in this. You know what I mean? And let's, you know, find out what this distance is, this space is, not by judging it, but by understanding it better and then making it better with what we learn and what we understand about what we discover. <laughs> I hope that that makes sense, my loves. So that's for those of you guys that chose the card healing. I love that message. I really do. Let me go ahead and move on to the next one, shall we? All right. So for this next pile, I'm really curious, not because I picked this pile, but because I want to see what it's all about. What's going on for those of you guys that chose the card independence, Lilith. All right, so first card is round and round, round and round. Ooh, engagement. Hmm, your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. Then we have yeehaw. You are adored. Then we have don't be misled. Make it God's. Release release the idea of my. As soon as you start to say the money, the relationship, the job, freedom arrives. Ooh, see? Independence. When there is no grasping, the right actions get shown. Free me from the prison of my. Then we have positivity. Then we have courage. We have self-sufficiency, which is a really strong connection to independence as well. World energy. Patience, financial healing, forgiveness. This card has been showing up a lot lately. Guardian angel, three of fire, seven of air, which is seven of swords, queen of water, and then for tarot, ooh, queen of swords reversed. Eight of Swords and Queen of Pentacles. So right away, <laughs> I'm really getting this strong sense of fear. A really, I don't want to say healthy level of fear. It was healthy until it wasn't. There was, you know, resistance was good until it wasn't anymore. Um, resentment just came through. Uh, I don't want that. I'm pushing that away. I don't like that. I don't like what you did. I don't like what happened to me. I don't like what's happening. There's this sense of, <clears throat> you know, and I understand that. I'm getting that this doesn't have to necessarily be a, like it doesn't have to be a person or something that you're upset with or frustrated with or that's making you anxious. It could be the circumstances around you that are creating this sense of irritation, spiritual, spiritual, emotional irritation is bothering you. What happened though, is that at some point you started locking in, you started locking down, your energy started locking up because you became really resistant. As I said that, I'm getting the sense that you're calling your resistance resilience when in reality what's happening is you're blocking yourself and it almost creates a problem. As I'm saying this, as my hand goes, I'm getting round and round. So, and I'm remind, I'm remembering that we pulled the round and round card. So it feels like I've been here before. I've seen this happen before. Um, don't, I just heard, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. I'm different now, or that's not gonna happen to me. But listen, I hear you. 
I feel you, I get you. But as I'm looking at this, I'm getting this really strong sense from spirit, from the divine that says, do you think I've forgotten about you? Do you think I would let you get in trouble? Do I think, do you think I would allow you to kind of succumb to the same obstacles, the same things? I'm not gonna put you in the same space or bring in things into your life and tell you that this is it and then it punishes you and lashes out like a snake with you know poisonous teeth with venom. I'm trying to give you medicine knowing that I need you to stop locking up and being resentful and then calling it resilience. Um, I don't know if someone needed to hear that. I am feeling as though, even with these cards, don't be misled. Seven of air, which is seven of swords. Eight of swords, queen of swords reversed. This is someone, there is, okay. There is a time and a place to use your intuition, um, to use your emotions, to use your logic. The word that just came through is tactile. It's like, you know, you're coming up with this plan or of this is how it's going to happen. This is the way that it'll be. This is how I know that this thing is manifesting. This is how I know that this person is good and right. But the reality is, is that is only your perspective and your perspective is shaped up by your experiences and the things that other people have taught you or shown you throughout your life. And even in that, it's very limited. It's very limited. That's not to say that your experiences and your lessons aren't significant because they are. You have learned and you have grown, but even as you learn and you grow, you have to also evolve. You have to constantly be evolved and be ready. You know what I mean? Be ready for, you know, be prepared, but not be overly prepared where you're just like been there, done that, cut it off with his head, you know, cut this, nip it in the bud. This isn't good. This isn't right. This can't amount to anything more than what it's presenting itself to me surface level. So what I'm getting here is you're actually ac accidentally deceiving yourself. Let's say someone is has deceived you or someone has done you wrong or you discover that this week, you know, it's sometimes it's the way that we react to it, the way that we perceive it, the way that we're understanding it. The the truth of that is twisted. It's it's discombobulated. It, all the facts are not there. It's just a part of what your understanding is. So it, it, there's a sense right now that is telling you for this week, for the next seven days, really calm and ground yourself and pull all of your energy back into your sacral chakra and into your heart chakra and breathe. It's not asking you to be a victim. It's saying don't be misled by the past situations that have presented themselves in one way. And, you know, it's like at some point there's got to be like the cycle ends, you know what I mean? But that's the thing is that energy, when there's an ending in our life that makes us, you know, feel sad or angry that it ended, it, it's still that ending manifests in another way. Like it always will manifest, but it's your energy that has to get pulled up to a higher level so that you don't roll over and get steamrolled by it. You know what I mean? I'm, and I know this sounds really conflicting, but this is what I'm saying when I'm when I'm when I feel, and I'm being supported by this with the card engagement. Your love life is ascending to a higher level of commitment. The thing that stands out to me is that things are ascending to a higher level. This means that you don't want to be misled by lower vibrational things, people, circumstances, but also the world is a mirror truthfully so you don't want to be misled by what you're seeing right now and taking it as facts only the reality is is that there's so much that we don't know maybe in someone's intentions maybe in a circumstance but also in the outcome and what is happening behind the scenes and how the divine is working to bring into your life and arrange certain things it's not that the universe doesn't arrange itself so that you know, we're all meant to get punished. It's constantly working to maintain balance and to make sure that everyone is being fulfilled and happy in all ways, all ways. So knowing that you have to kind of re like release this grip that again, you're calling it resilience, but it's resentment, it's anger, it's frustration. It's you're, you're not going to catch me slipping. Um, the reason why you're doing this is because there was a space in your life where you did feel abandoned, you did feel left out, things did not work out. Um, just the fact that this card showed up round and round shows me that 
it's this is not the first time that you felt like you've seen this happen before but knowing that realize that things do change circumstances change you have changed you have evolved but don't let your change the aspect of you that has changed make your heart hardened your hope lessened your faith diminished that you're moving from fear and out of faith you know what i mean so that's something there is this spent sense here it's so interesting now that i'm looking at these cards here so we have positivity and we have courage this is telling me that the universe is giving you so much support right now and recognition saying that it does take a lot of courage it's interesting that you don't have the um, strength card here but it's taking a lot of courage to think about this in a positive way to think about how this could be potentially a good thing how this could you know work out maybe consider the fact that this will work out don't be misled by your fears and what you think are facts there could be aspects of it that are facts but you don't know everything you don't know the details of everything and I just want you to consider the fact that maybe you don't know how all of this is gonna play out okay um, the thing that I'm getting here is this message that I want to read to you. It's kind of been like here on this side of me, um, which is very significant too because this is the masculine side. So this is something that I want to give to you right now. And it says the ultimate self-sufficiency is relying on God. So relying on the divine, relying on the unknown, relying on divinity um, to serve I just heard to seek you. I feel like the divine spirit, your ancestors, your guides are trying to seek you. They're looking for you. And I feel like they're doing that because you might have been too much in your logic. So they're saying, come back, <laughs> come back to us. We're seeking you. Okay. It doesn't mean hiding in a cave and saying, I don't need people. See that sense of, do you see that? That actually confirms a lot for me that I've been picking up in this reading. Even with the card independence, this card, sometimes when we hear the word independence, we literally think, I don't need anyone, I don't need anything, I'm independent, I don't need you, you know, I'm better than you, I'm better than this. But what ends up happening is that it's not it's no longer resilience, it becomes resentment, it becomes anger, and that the the fruit of that is rotten. It's not good. It's gonna make you sick, it's toxic. So that's what we don't want for you. Don't get don't confuse independence with you know, isolation and anger and pushing everyone out. That is not what independence is. Independence is literally, you know what, I can give to myself. I can serve my needs. Yes, I would love to share, you know, maybe my life with someone or maybe I enjoy my time alone. But independence is I can give to myself in the way that I need. I can meet my own needs right now. I can enjoy my time. And I'm also able and capable of sharing my life or gifts or something with the other. That's what independence is. It's not fuck the whole world, fuck you, fuck that. Like, no, that's not what independence is. Okay, it doesn't mean hiding in a cave and saying, I don't need people. Instead, it's saying, God is my source. The divine is my source. The universe is my source. And I am willing to receive all of the help, love and support that wants to come, right? Now, saying that, I'm getting this sense of pulling these cards. We have three of fire, so something is wanting to come in, something is wanting to give to you. We have you are adored, and we also have yeehaw. That means be open to this adventure, be open to this level, this next level trend, transcending of things. I'm also seeing the queen of pentacles and the queen of cups showing up. These are about feminine energy, so this ability to receive and to stand in your power. And to you not having to be the protector, for you not being strong all the time, it doesn't matter if you're a male or female or whatever. Um, it's just you really being all of who you are and allowing yourself to receive because you are so adored and because it is your time and because it is here. To have patience with yourself. Even as I'm looking at this card, the world energy, it's, it's really sitting here to confirm the fact that no one gets left behind. No one should get left be, be left behind. There's no need for that. If there is people who are left behind or do not get what they need and deserve and desire, it's because our leadership is wonky. 
our leadership is selfish and that came from a space of resentment res like and saying that oh we're resilient everything is working out it's not working out everyone needs to be in a healthy space of give and take it's not independence isolation one leader calling the shots and that being detrimental to everyone um, Instagram is popping off right now so this has nothing to do with me though thank God <laughs> I, I, I do a very good a good job of disconnecting from the chaos thank goodness it's because um, I don't allow myself to get misled and I also keep my energy in a very high vibration oh speaking of which right world energy <laughs> so yeah it's this is saying that literally no one gets left behind no every detail is tended to and the universe is always trying to balance things out it's always trying to make things good and right for everyone um that being said it's like you know realize that you're not going to be left out so knowing that don't have this sense of i don't need anything i don't need anyone when the universe is trying to pour into you and say Listen, don't be misled by your past circumstances because you have transcended them. You can be independent and also have people in your life and also receive, especially with the fact it's no coincidence that you have Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Cups. Yes, they are strong. Yes, they are independent, but they still allow themselves to receive and their strength isn't diminished because of it. Woo! Okay, um, with the Guardian card here, um, I just want to say that there's this recognition really quickly that you've been feeling like this person sitting on the steps just waiting for someone to come and that's a part of where this resilience aka resentment has been coming from but have have this mindset that maybe things are working out for the better work on maybe not forgiving you know it's it's tough that word forgiveness I, I could make a whole video about it but you have this card forgiveness here even as I'm looking at it her face is like ugh, I can't I can't but it's you know it's really kind of letting go of the chaos giving it back up to the divine giving it up to the universe and opening up to all right maybe maybe just maybe i don't know how this is going to play out maybe the universe will surprise me maybe think good things are in store let me maybe consider that i'm going to put out to the universe that this is what i want so it shall be so it is, so mode it be, whatever you want to say. And allow yourself to find relief again. Allow yourself to relax. Allow yourself to step back into alignment and repair, you know, all that has been done because you have really transcended. You've really come through this, but we don't want you to come through it and be beaten up and broken down and, you know, calling it resilience, but really it's just resentment. Do you know what I mean? So soften the heart, you know what I mean? So that's what it is that I'm seeing for you, my love. For those that picked the card, Lilith. So thank you guys so much. If you um, enjoyed this video, please let me know. Giving it a thumbs up really makes a difference for me. Um, subscribing to the YouTube channel is generous and good for you and for me because I post messages all the time. And I'm always setting intention that those who are to hear it will hear it and those who aren't don't. But I do invite you to share this video with friends that you know strike out to you or your tribe your community so that you can share these messages of positivity love and light again like i said make sure you are subscribed to this youtube video because there's plenty more videos where this came from and i'll see you in my next one bye